this question, we're going to intersect a circle and a line. Now what we're going to need is two equations. They've given us the equation of a line right there, and I need to write out the equation of a circle, and there's the center and the radius. So we have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. I'm just filling in these values now. So the radius is 6. So remember it's 6, six squared that you're going to see over there. All right, and uh, x minus 0 coordinate. Remember your h is first and your k is second. So we have y minus 5 squared. Uh, of course, I don't need to keep the minus 0 squared. So this is just x squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 6 squared is 36. Okay, so let's rewrite the equation of the line. Uh, so I'll just write both equations right down here. So intersect x squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 36. And y equals, so 1 fifth or 1.5 is 3 halves. You can definitely leave it as a decimal, but I'm going to turn it into a fraction. All right, so we need to eliminate x or y from one of these. Uh, or we can substitute for, uh, into the other equation. So I see that our second equation is already solved for y. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to place it into y in the first equation. So we're going to substitute y equals 3 half x plus 5 into x squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 36. So we're going to take out the y and put in 3 halves x plus 5. You still have that minus 5. So you still get that minus 5 there. So don't forget about that. I got a little lucky here. My 5s are going to cancel out. You uh, likely won't have that happening. So my equation actually is quite easy. Let's just say that didn't happen and maybe I had like a plus 10. Like if it was plus 5, plus 5. When I square this, I have to FOIL it out. So just keep that in mind. If you have two terms, one term plus another term, you're going to have to FOIL this out. Again, I got lucky here and the plus 5, minus 5, whoa, canceled. Okay, so I don't have to square. I do have to, well, I do have to square, but I don't have to FOIL. There's a product here, so I can just distribute the square to each of these. So I have 3 halves squared times x squared. Copy down everything else. So 3 halves squared is 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. x squared. All right, we're about to add fractions. I see I have an x squared and an x squared. Now this is really one x squared, so we're gonna factor out the x squared, and what we're left with is one plus nine fourths. And one is, of course, four fourths. Four fourths is one, so I have four fourths plus nine fourths. X squared equals 36, we're almost there. Four plus nine is 13. Fourths x squared equals 36. Uh, now, if you did have to FOIL here, what you're going to need to do is use the most likely quadratic formula or complete the square. Uh, I didn't have to do any of that here, but you're still going to have to combine your x squared terms like I did. So, how do we get rid of this 13 fourths? We're going to multiply both sides by 4 thirteenths. So that will cancel 13 fourths. Gives us x squared equals... 36 times 4 thirteenths and square root both sides. That gives us a plus and a minus.
Okay, so let's reduce this a little bit. This is actually very easy to reduce because I remember the 36 is 6 squared, the 4 is 2 squared. Unfortunately, the 13 is just 13, it's prime number, it's not going to factor. Okay, so you can bring the 6 out times the 2, and you're left with the square root 1 13th, uh, which we can write as plus or minus 6 times 2 is 12 over the square root 13 is a square root 1 over square root 13, but of course you don't need to write the square root 1 because that's 1. So you can just write it as plus or minus 12 over square root 13. Okay. So it's talking about decimal places here, so you may need to turn this into a decimal and you can use a calculator for that. Okay, so that's the x value, except do we choose plus or minus? So there's another part of this problem that we need to pay attention to, first quadrant. So what happens in the first quadrant, x and y are positive. So we're gonna choose the positive version. And again, you may have to type this into a calculator here and get the decimal number. So how do you get the y value? Well, we're gonna go back. We're gonna use the easier equation, obviously. We don't wanna work harder than we need to work. So I'll just write the equation out. Also, if you use the harder equation, you're gonna get a plus or minus, and which, again, you'll have to take the positive one to get in the first quadrant. So we're just gonna pick the easier equation. Now, what x value do we plug in? Oh, we plug in this one right here. 3 halves times 12 over root 13 plus 5. You can reduce this, and you may need to turn it into a decimal, and that's going to go right in there.